Welcome to You and Your Democracy. It's a short take civics lesson as part of our program, Where Do We Go From Here? I'm Chuck Parkinson. Each episode, we will look at the head and heart of democracy. We will explore the values and the principles that have created our American exceptionalism and examine the structures and institutions that give us the guardrails of our democratic republic. To quote Benjamin Franklin when asked in 1787 after the Constitutional Convention, Doctor, what have we got, a republic or a monarchy? To which Franklin responded with a rejoinder at once witty and ominous, a republic if you can keep it. So now let's take a look at what is this great American experiment and then ask, what do we need to do to keep it? In this episode, we will discuss democracy and your participation. I am pleased to be joined by Patrick Ganey, Chair of the Social Studies Department at Spearfish High School. Thanks for joining us today, Pat. Thanks for having me. Well, let's just jump right in. Why does democracy demand our participation? Well, it's, uh, I'm often reminded of the quote by uh, Jefferson, you get the government you deserve. And uh, uh, d democracy, uh, uh, specifically, more specifically, a republic, is meant to be a participatory style of government. And if we don't have people involved and contributing uh, to the government, uh, it doesn't function as well as it should. That goes along the line of one of my favorite political scientists, Dr. Larry Sabato, who's the head of the Center for Politics at the University of Virginia, who said, elections are determined by people who show up. Very true. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was uh, looking at a, a few statistics uh, in advance of uh, the program today. I was looking at the last general election in South Dakota in 2018 and uh, voter turnout um, I believe statewide was just uh, just under 28 or 29 percent, and uh, Lords County, uh, uh, West River was a little higher uh, than that. We were in the low 30s, I believe. But uh, you know, the the thing I think we need to remember is all elections matter, uh, almost particularly local elections. And uh, our last local election. Uh, I think it's school board issue. Uh, our voter turnout was 11 percent. 11. You know, when 11 percent of the electorate is making the decisions for the other 89, I'm not sure how much room the other 89 have to complain. So that's a very good point to make on that. And, and one of the things that drives this is that we've gra we've seen over the last 50 years where South Dakota, you know, when I first got the right to vote. At, because of quirk of way things went, I was 23 years old, not you know, not 18 like today, and that was you know it was the height of the Vietnam War, and it was a situation where South Dakota was proud to have 75 to 80 percent of the population vote in almost every election, certainly in state, state and federal elections, and much higher numbers locally. What do you think has driven the fact that we no longer participate? Well, uh, I, I think it's a number of issues. You know, po politics to a certain extent has become this, uh, this zero sum game where any kind of a victory for the other side is viewed as a defeat for your side. So, uh, you know, both political parties have kind of taken on this scorched earth policy. I, I think you can see this unfolding uh, right now. Uh, in this, uh, you know, this extension of the CARES Act um, that is trying to grind its way through Congress currently, uh, Republicans have, uh, you know, a different vision about about how that ought to look than Democrats have, and um, you know, there's just an increasing amount of intransigence by both parties. They're both they're both digging in their heels, you know, convinced that uh, they can they can wade out the other side and. And get what they want. I, I spend a, a fair amount of time with my students trying to explain to them, um, you know, a republic or a democracy in general, uh, you know, to quote Churchill, is uh, the worst form of government except all the other ones that have been tried. And and uh, it's there are legitimate policy differences. And uh, so I, I try to make it clear to students that. 
you know, instead of demonizing the other side or saying the other side is unpatriotic for a position, um, you know, really you, you have to be willing to, to listen. That's what the system is built to do. It's the system is built to force compromise. And, uh, you know, unless you're willing to compromise, I, I don't know that our Republic works especially well. And, um, so, you know, there are legitimate policy issues on, on, uh, taxing and, and healthcare and defense. And it doesn't mean one side is right or or wrong or more patriotic or less patriotic. Uh, so that's the thing I think that, you know, I, I start with that in my, the classes that I teach is uh, trying to explain to students, to prospective citizens here that uh, uh, there are legitimate uh, policy differences um, and not to, to do a little bit more listening uh, to the other side instead of demonizing. And I, you know, I think social media just fans the flames on that too, so. I think that's one of the very important uh, point from that standpoint, Pat, that, that people don't listen anymore. You know, uh, there's a difference between hearing and listening. And yes. you might hear things, but we've gotten to the point where we're so politically divided that we don't want to listen to what the other side even has to say. And the bottom line is we all have much more in common with each other than, than we have that is not common with each other. And that listening is very important. Agreed. Uh, I, I think another uh, important point, and I, I stress this to my students also, d democracy, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not designed to be an efficient system. Uh, democracy is messy. Uh, you know, allowing everybody to have a say, allowing everybody to have input, uh, by definition, necessitates compromise. And if you're unwilling to compromise, uh, you know, it, by its very nature, it's going to be an, uh, an inefficient system. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily make it bad, you know. Uh, when you talk to, you know, average citizens, one of their biggest complaints about government is, well, it doesn't do anything. All those people do is talk. Well, in a sense, in a democracy, that's what they're supposed to do. Uh, you know, if you want efficiency, um, I, I could give you all kinds of models of efficiency, uh, Nazi Germany and uh, communist Russia and uh, fascist Italy. Uh, the trains certainly ran on time. Not a lot of personal freedom there. But, uh, you know, I think, I think sometimes we confuse democracy with efficiency. Sometimes those are two very different things. They certainly are, and that, that's the point of sitting down and in, in reaching that compromise where uh, people don't always want to listen to what the other person has to say, but it goes to the point where it reminded me of back in the early 1980s when just shortly after Ronald Reagan was elected president, and Tip O'Neill from Massachusetts, who was a very liberal Democrat, was the Speaker of the House of Representatives, and they would trash each other all week long, but they got together one evening a week at the White House, both being Irishmen, and they would open a bottle of Irish whiskey and they would uh, sit down and talk to each other. And that's how they reached certain agreements. And Reagan did say at one time, he said, I'd like to get 100% of everything, but I know I'm not going to. I'd settle for 60% because it's the first step to move forward. And the, and the compromise they worked out on a lot of things, you know, the, the, there was a strong, big, large Democratic majority in the House of Representatives at that time. And yeah. That's an excellent contrast with today, you know, because uh, I think among a lot of politicians, I'm not even necessarily talking at the national level, even at the state and local level, their attitude is, well, if I can't get 100% of what I want, uh, you know, I'm going to take my football and go home. I'm just, I'm not going to play. And, you know, this is what we see that results in uh, government shutdowns and, and, and those kinds of things. So uh, I really think we need to, to, uh, you know, explain to people that uh, the system necessitates compromise and working together and listening to the other side. Which brings us right back to the reason for participating in, in the activity as a, as a voter, as a, as a citizen, the, the important part about having to sit down and actually participate to learn how it works and then make your voice heard. Yeah, and I, you know, there's also a lot of uh, misinformation about out there about uh, voter participation, uh, uh, that it's difficult to register, and um, 
or that, you know, I, I, one of the excuses I often hear people say for not voting is, well, that's how they get your name for jury duty, <laughs> which is partly true, but uh, I, I think, it, I believe it's a combination of uh, voter um, registration and uh, driver's license uh, uh, information. So it's not like if you don't ever vote, you're not gonna get on jury duty. But I think that's a fairly common mis uh, misconception among people. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> that's an interesting observation from that standpoint, because it seems like it's a lot easier for a lot of people to give an excuse than actually take that one step that might be necessary to to get involved and to participate because their vote does count. You know, oh, even yeah. if you're on the losing side, even if you're on the losing side, that participation is very important because, you know, things people do get hurt. Uh, yeah. That leaves us. We've got only a, a minute or so left. Any final thought we would leave? And maybe we'll pick this up again later. Um, well, we, we do some uh, voter registration stuff uh, at our school. Uh, you know, it's mainly, of course, the seniors that are going to be uh, old enough to participate. But um, our, uh, some of our student organizations actually set up a registration table uh, to get kids to register and, and uh, fill out their proper paperwork with the, uh, the county. And um, I think it, it's interesting, I see more and more people aligning themselves as independents. You know, there's a certain level of dissatisfaction with both, both, both parties. And, and so, uh, you know, I, I think they, they feel like they want to make those people compete for their vote, which I, I think that's a healthy thing. I think that's a, really is a discussion for another day. I'd like to go on and on, but uh, we're up to time. Well, uh, thanks so, so much for having me, Chuck I, and uh, Susanna. I really appreciate it. We appreciate having you. That's our episode for now. I want to thank Pat Ganey for sharing his expertise and thoughts with us today. And as always, our executive producer, Suzanne Stratford, and the SPTV technical staff for their creativity and hard work on this program. Thank you also to the supporters of South Dakota Public Broadcasting who make this program possible. To view previous episodes in this series, go to sbpb.org slash election. If you have comments or suggestions for future episodes, send us a note at programming at sbpb.org. Until our next short take, I'm Chuck Parkinson.